Hey boys and girls, today we're going to look at a quick lesson to review how to complete a multiplication table with missing factors and products. All right, we did spend a little bit of time in third grade teaching you how to do this, but it, um, it's been a while and we didn't get to spend a whole lot of time doing it. So we thought it would be helpful to you and your parents to remind you of how this works. So looking at your packet, um, if you're not here already, eventually you're going to get to this page in your packet where you have a, a couple multiplication tables at the top that, if you notice, are missing both factors and products. All right, so let's take a look at what I have here and see how this works. There is many different ways of figuring out missing factors and missing products in a multiplication table. All right. The one thing that you have to understand first is how a multiplication table works, all right? So the first thing that you need to be reminded of is that the, the numbers in this first column are factors, okay? And the numbers in the first row are factors. And we, we, we multiply factors to create products. So the numbers with the white background in the middle of the table are all products. So we take our factors and we multiply them together to get our products, okay? All right, so as far as figuring out the, the missing factors and products, um, pick a place to start, all right? You could either start with column one and then go to column two and column three and so on, or you can start with row one and work your way down one row at a time. So I'm gonna start with row one, and what I like to do first is see if there's any patterns, see if I can, identify a pattern. So a, a, a pattern would be when, when you have two or more numbers going in a row where the same thing is happening each time. Okay, when, when we have numbers going in a row, two or more in a row, we, we call that um, consecutive, all right? So if you look at our first row, again, these are factors. So I'm looking to see if there's a pattern in my factors. The first factor that they give us is three. Now, there is not a, another number after it, it's blank, okay? So we don't have any consecutive numbers there, so I can't find a pattern just looking here and here. But if you go from here to here, there's two numbers in a row or two consecutive numbers, so you can try to identify a pattern. How do you get from five to six? Okay, that's easy, you would add one, right? So I always label the pattern at the end of the row. Okay, so this looks like it might be a plus one pattern. So if I go back to the first factor and I do that pattern and keep that pattern going, it should all work out. What's three plus one? Three plus one is four. Four plus one is five. Five plus one is six. So it looks like that pattern is true. It works out by using that pattern. Okay, now I can also use multiplication to check and make sure that that factor is correct. So if, if you um, remember that these are factors, three times two should give you this product six, and it does. So that means if I take the factor four and multiply by the factor two, it should give me eight, and it does, okay? That works. So that's, that's further evidence that four is our missing factor. Now, let's take a look at row two, all right? Row two, now this is a factor, and then the products start here, okay? So when you're identifying a pattern in row one, or I'm sorry, row two, you don't wanna start with this two because the two is not a product. We're missing a product here, so we need to focus on our products and see if there is a pattern with our products, okay? So I go from six and then I have eight, so I have two consecutive products here, and then I have a missing product and then 12. So using these two, let's see if we can identify a pattern. How do I get from six to eight? You would add two, right? So it looks like our pattern might be a plus two pattern, okay? So if I keep that pattern going, six plus two is eight, eight plus two is 10, and then 10 plus two is 12, okay? So that's one way of figuring it out. And now I can use multiplication as well to make sure that 10 is correct. The factor five times the factor two does equal the product 10, okay? All right, moving on to row three. Row three, we have our factor, we're missing a product, and then we have three consecutive products, or three products in a row, all 
right? So we can identify a pattern going from 12 to 15 to 18. How do I get from 12 to 15? If you're saying plus three, you are correct. If um, you keep that pattern going, 15 plus three, 15 plus three does equal 18. So it looks like my plus three pattern is correct, All right? So I'm gonna write that here. Now, I can't start at three and add three because remember this isn't a product, but I can take this product and do the opposite, minus three. What's 12 minus three? If you're saying nine, you are correct. So nine plus three is 12, 12 plus three is 15, or 15 plus three is 18. I can even use multiplication to check, three times three equals nine. All right, moving on to row three. Row three, we're missing a factor, okay? And over here, we're missing a product. So to identify our missing factor, we can look at our factors going down this first column and look for a pattern. There's two factors in a row right here. How do I get from two to three? Plus one, right? So it looks like we have a plus one pattern in this first column of factors, all right? So if I take three and I add one to it, it gives me four. And if I take four and add one to it, it gives me five, all right? I can also check to make sure that four is correct by using multiplication. Four times three is 12. Four times four is 16. Four times five is 20. And now here we're missing a product. We could do four times six to get our product. But again, I think identifying a pattern is the easiest way to do it. And then we can use multiplication to check. So starting with our products, look for a pattern, 12 to 16 to 20. What's happening each time? Hopefully you're saying plus four. We are adding four each time. Okay. So if I keep that pattern going, 12 plus four is 16, 16 plus four is 20, 20 plus four is 24. All right. And then I can use multiplication to check. Four times six does equal 24. All right. Last row. We have a factor of five, we have the product 15, a missing product, and then the products 25 and 30. So these are consecutive, they're in a row. So how do I get from 25 to 30? Plus five, right? So it looks like we have a plus five pattern going. All right, so I'm going back to the first product, 15, using that pattern, plus five. What's 15 plus five? 20, that's easy. And then we could do 20 plus five is 25, 25 plus five is 30. So it checks out there. And also we could do five times four is 20, five times five is 25, five times six is 30. So it looks like everything is checking out. Now, boys and girls, you can even, just to double check again, you can even identify the patterns going down the columns of, of your products. Six, nine, 12, 15, we have a, plus three pattern, okay? If I go from eight to 12 to 16 to 20, we have a plus four pattern, okay? That's why I love it when you can identify a pattern, it makes it so easy. If we're going from 10 to 15 to 20 to 25, we have a plus five pattern, okay? And in the last column, oops, sorry about that. Let me erase that real quick. In the last column, we have 12, 18, 24, 30. We're adding six each time, okay? So lots of ways to figure out those missing factors and products. Look for patterns, use multiplication, use division. It all works, all right? So hopefully, hopefully this helps you. And you now remember how to um, find your missing factors and products. If you have any questions, please send a message to your child's teacher. All right. See you guys later.